Hello and welcome to the first tutorial video for RERO. Now RERO stands for Reconfigurable Robot. It's a robotic system designed based on easy to use hardware and simple programming. And as you can see here we have two examples of robots you can build with the RERO system. And today I will teach you how to build your own robot. This. Today we will be building this. Now I know this one seems boring compared to these two amazing robots but hey before you learn how to run, you learn, you learn how to walk and as for robot building, before you build humanoids maybe you need to start from the simplest so this is a car robot now we will begin on the building tutorial now to build this simple robot, we need all the following parts one controller four interconnects two rotatable connects four servos two cube joints four adapter joints four wheels, nine double spacers and one single spacer and the opener. So first of all we take our controller. The controller is the most important part of the real robot. You see this on every single robot you build because all the programming is done here. So first take this and then turn it around. Now these are slots and then now take the adapter joint and then slide it into the slots. To to make it easier to build your robot, remember to let your, the slot on the adapter joint face outwards. So it will be easier to slot in the parts later on. Now, after you push it in, take double spacers and then fill in the slot. The double spacers work by stopping your adapter joint so that it won't slide around during your robot is moving. Now you see it won't slide even if I push it. Now, just in case you put in the parts the wrong way, remember that you can always use the opener. Just push it into a slot, push it here, and then push your parts. See, it will come out. If you don't use the opener, the parts will not slide out no matter how hard you push. Okay, now on the other end, slide in the double spacers first because you want the adapter joint on the end. Slide them in and just in case you want to know we need four double spacers on each side now finally push in the adapter joint <coughs> now this is the base of our robot now the adapter joint is important because it's used to connect servos cube joints onto your robot <coughs> now take two interconnects and then slide it into the adapter joint now remember there are two types of connects one is the interconnect is solid and then the second one is the rotatable connect this one can turn for here we need the solid interconnect because we don't want our robot to be wobbly we want it to be solid now slide in both ways <coughs> after that take two servos and then slide it in to the interconnect just like that there are a lot of slots on the servos slide in slide in until you hear a click sound After that, take two wheels and then slide in through both of the output connects. Now remember when you connect parts onto the, onto the servos, remember to follow the yellow arrow. Let's say it points here, remember to slide your parts this way. This is so that the parts won't get stuck later on. Remember if you ever put the parts wrong, you always use the opener to push it out. The same way you, do, you did just now. Slide back, put the wheels on both sides and we're done with the base of the robot. <coughs> now, what we're trying to do is something like a car robot, so we'll be following how a real car works. Now a real car works by having two drive wheels and our wheels connected to the motor. These two motors will push the robot forward, backwards, so it's how the robot moves mainly. Now after that, the two other sets of the wheels on the car is used for steering. Its main function is to turn left, turn right, so that the car can turn left and turn right and so on. Now we can now take two adapter joints, one double spacer and one single spacer. Slide in the adapter joint on the front of the robot. So this is where our steering wheels will go. Then one double spacer and one single spacer will do. If you use a double spacer here, we won't have enough room for the adapter joint. Finally, we the adapter joint. 
make sure everything is firm. Okay, now take two interconnects and then slide it in. So this is where we'll be built, we'll be putting our servos. So unlike the last two servos, which we connect to the wheel, we'll connect this servo here with the output connector facing downwards. Now we we put this we put it this way so that when it turns, you can steer the wheel left and right. Now take two cube joints. Now cube joints are different from servos. Main, although they look the same, they don't have wires and they don't have the output connector. Now slide in, just like that. And then finally, we're putting the two wheels here. Now, here we finally use the, the rotatable connector. Now we use this here so that our wheel can turn. If we use the interconnect, the wheels won't be able to turn and that'll be just, well, the car won't move at all. So slide in here. You can slide any, any way you like, you can just turn it back. Now slide here. Okay. Now finally, slide in the wheels on the rotatable connector. Like so. And then, we are done with the robot. So, before your robot can move, we need to put in the wires. So, what we have to do here is make sure that all the servos are connected to the controller. There are six ports on the controller. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now the idea is to make sure that all the servos are connected to the controller so the controller can send commands to the motor so that they can move. Now let's have a look at the servo. You can see that there are actually two wires uh, extending from the from the servo. One is male, one is female. Now as you can see the ports on the controllers are female so you need to put in the male uh, connectors into the port so just make sure that all the motors are connected to the controller so this here I'll put in now make sure you you connect the connector in the correct direction okay, as you can see on the male port there's this zooming one this one this thing actually works by locking the male connector to the female connector so it won't go loose so connect all of them into the controller now what if something like this happens so I've connected all the connectors I can but let's say this connection this connector this male connector cannot reach the port on the controller now there are two ways to fix this first you can take the extension provided in the set so you can just do it like this so you just connect it to the extension and then it will be long enough to connect to the port. Now the second way to solve this is by using daisy chain. Daisy chaining means connecting the servo to another servo. So this belongs to this servo, this belongs to this servo, connecting them together. And then finally, at least one servo needs to be connected to the controller. So this way, the servo that cannot reach the controller can now, it's now connected to the controller through another motor. This is daily chaining. Now that we're done building and plugging in all the wires, the robot is done. So what we're going to do now is try to program the robot. So we have to turn on. Let's click on the turn on button. Okay. Now this is the main menu. Now the special thing about Rero is that you can program it without using a computer. So you can test it out after you're done building it as fast as you want without using a computer so it's very simple to use now before we start teaching the robot what to do go to the server option on the menu <coughs> now the server option here is used to set the limits of the servos of the robot now what does this mean now the real servos is a 360 degree servo that serves two functions one as a wheel and the other one as a joint now, what do we mean here is that, let's say as a wheel, control. the wheel has to turn 360 degrees because we can't say like after it turns 180 degrees and then it's stuck forever, no, this one needs to turn 360 degrees and beyond. But for joint mode, like another example here, the joint mode is like our arm, the elbow, so let's say our arm can turn all the way here, can go any further and then all the way here. 
then can't go any any more downwards. So this is my limit for my arm joint. I can't go below this point. So this is the same for the regal's joint. So let's say this part is an arm of the regal robot. It can turn all the way here, but cannot go this way. Cannot go anymore. And then here, cannot go anymore here. You need to use the servo function in the controller to tell to tell the reload controller how much it can turn or else errors will occur. Let's say it wants to turn 160 degrees but it can't. It keeps on trying, then you hurt the robot. Now you can see that we have four servos here, 011, 012, 013 and 014. Now if you use motors with different codes, it's okay. It's just a number just to indicate which motor you're selecting. Now let's say I'm selecting 011. You can see that the motor, the LED on the motor is shining, as you can see right inside here. So if I select 012, it's here. So this indicates which motor you're selecting, so you can set it. Now if you add in additional motors, you can just click refresh. So let's say I add a fifth motor, it will be shown, it will be shown here. Okay. Now to set the limit for the motor, first select one motor 011, it's this one, and then click set path. So now you can see that most of the circle is red in color. Red means the regions that the motor cannot go to, the limits of the rope, of the servo. So you can just turn it like this. So you can go here, and then I'll turn it here. You can see I'll go all the way until it finally it almost collides with the controller. Then I'll stop. So you can see that's the green region. That's where that's the region where the motor is allowed to move. After that, you can click save. Now onto servo zero one two. Now zero one two is the drive wheel. Remember, as you remember, is the wheel that the motor that controls the movement allows the robot to move forward and backward. So since this is a wheel, it does not need a limit. So just go to set path and then highlight wheel. So like this means that it's highlight, and then you can see that this shows three zeros. Then it's okay. Then click save. So continue with the other two servos. 013 for me is also the motor, so it needs to have wheel highlighted. Save. And then 014 is the drive. So I mirror the, mirror the limit for the other steering wheel. We go all the way until it almost touches. And then save. And then you're done. Of course, if the codes of your servos are different, it's also okay just, just do with Whatever, just follow the LED, then everything will be fine. Then once you're done, click X. Then you're done with setting the limits. Now that we have done with setting the limits for the servos, we can now finally teach the robot what to do. Okay. Now to do this, we have to go to teach. So here's where you can teach. Here you can see there are five files here. It means that you can teach a total of five programs to the robot. Once you can overwrite the programs that you don't need anymore. So let's go with file 1. Select file 1 and then click teach. So how does this work? <clears throat> well basically you teach the robot what to do and then you can play the program and then the robot will copy what you the, copy the command that you just gave it. So let's say I move the steering here. Now this is considered the first time frame that's let's say step 1 of the program. After that I'll click next. Now move it back. This is step two. Then I click next. Stop. Now go to play. And then file one. If I click play, it will run the program that I just taught previously. Now one thing to remember is that the time frame, the duration of each time frame is zero point five seconds. So what does this mean? Is that so? I'll show you the example for one teach. So let's say I want the robot to move forward for one second. <coughs> so the first step would be moving forward. <coughs> step one. And then the second step would be also moving forward. Step two. So two zero point five seconds equal one second. So by doing this, I've made the robot move forward for one second. So after this, I'll just make it turn. <coughs> now when you're turning the steering turning this, remember to hold on to the cube joint because it's more firm 
And don't worry if it's uh, if it's kind of tight. It's meant to be like that. Next, and then that's it. Okay, now the play. Make it. Now see, it move for one second and then turn. Okay, so that's what you have to do if you want to make your robot make your robot move for a fixed duration. Now that you've built your basic robot and learned how to program it, here's a simple challenge for you. This is a challenge that you can set up at home. It's very simple. Just make sure that your robot can do a side parking into a parking slot on the side. And that's it. Once you've done this, you're officially done with the basics. Congratulations.